So now we finally have everything we need to study the triangular pulse on a string. So I've been making this quite a few times uh, up to now. And whenever you see one of these triangular pulses going along the string, I do it by making an initial pulse like this. So here's a couple that you may recall seeing. And here, I'll do another one. So here it is, and we let it go. And we get our pulse going back and forth. Now, we just described how to do that with a Fourier series and adding the, uh, the time part of the, the normal modes and letting them go. We said first, you get the shape, and you call that the ANs, right? So we had the initial shape. That would be just basically y uh, of x at time equals 0. And that's where you describe the initial triangular shape. We actually did it as a homework problem, or it is an, it is an assigned homework problem, where the slope goes up to the distance l over 20, and then it comes down uh, at the same rate of the distance l over 10, and the rest of the string is flat. And I actually gave you the answer for what is the function for the ANs, right? So you had to solve for AN, uh, what set of amplitudes would give you that shape. I gave it to you in LS2 unit 4B4 when we started thinking about this. So if you want to go back and check your work there, um, you can. So here, now I'm going to show you that, that those uh, coefficients really do work. Those ANs are the right ones. Here, I put those in MATLAB. And this is now going to show you, adding more and more of those components, that it makes the right shape. So this is the, uh, just the n equals 1 term. And you'll see that n increase as we get more and more of the shape. So here we go. And sure enough, as we add more and more terms, we get a nicer and nicer triangle. Here I've set the slope and the length equal to 1. But you don't see the units here, so it doesn't matter. So the ANs do give us a nice shape. And we talked about how different initial velocity conditions will make the pulse do different things. I'm releasing it from rest. So the initial velocity, y dot x0, um, equals 0. And we saw how basically what that means is that the b ends all equals 0. So releasing it uh, from rest really is the case where you just take all the normal modes that you've calculated to do the shape, and you just add their time-dependent part, cosine omega t. Okay? So now I have a video of that. So I put that in MATLAB and simulated the motion of the pulse. And here you can see, so this is the initial position. And we're about to let it go in time. See what it looks like. And there it goes. And now you see something interesting. It doesn't make a single pulse. It makes a double pulse. But every time I launch one, I get a single pulse. So what's going on here? This is a disagreement between experiment and theory. Okay? And whenever there's a disagreement between experiment and theory, the answer is almost always that there's something wrong with the theory. However, in this case, this is the rare case that there's something wrong with the experiment. Maybe you've seen it already. Maybe not. Let's think. I do that. I start with it at rest. It's not going anywhere, it's at rest. And I release it, and it goes. And it's not giving us what our Fourier series says it should give us. So see if you can figure out, what am I doing wrong? What's wrong with this experiment? Hmm. Watch one in slow motion. Here's one in super slow-mo. See if you can see it frame at a time. What is wrong? My peaks aren't always perfect, but the string doesn't like to kink perfect. Okay. Well, if you haven't seen it, now I'm going to tell you it's this. We are starting it from rest with a nice pulse shape, but I'm not removing this finger. The key to making a nice single pulse is to pull it down against your finger and let it go and keep your finger there. That's kind of what throws it up in the air. Okay. But that's not what we describe mathematically. Mathematically, it was this shape, and then everything holding it disappeared. Right. So. I need to let go here and get this finger out of the way to really simulate or to really match the theory we did. 
that's pretty hard to do, okay? So if you calculate the length of this pulse and this, the velocity and everything, I basically have to release them both within about four milliseconds of each other. It's not impossible, it's not easy. So what I'm gonna do is stand to the side, and this time I'll go up to really make it match what we've been drawing. And I'm gonna release it, and we'll show it to you nice and slow. And we're gonna do a bunch until I get a good one. But we're just gonna show you the good one to propagate the myth that I know what I'm doing up here. Okay, so here we go. Here's the pulse and release. So there you go. If you make the experiment, match the theory, you get the exact same shape, a double pulse moving to the right, which really is what you would expect. When we thought about what should happen, when you have a single triangle from rest, we said, well, it feels some force down here, it feels some force down there, it feels some force down there, it should result in two pulses moving like that, this initial uh, condition. And that's pretty much what we have. It's just one of them is hitting the boundary instantly and flipping and going the other way. So it is two pulses that are initially moving apart. This one just instantly goes with this one. That's the reason it makes this double pulse shape. So. Everything makes sense, physics works, I keep my job, everything's fine. <laughs>